Welcome to Year in Review, the show where we break down a year to bring you some of the most notable moments in TV and film, month by month. Let's jump back to 2008, a roller coaster of a year, jam-packed with pop culture landmarks. History was made when Barack Obama won the presidential election and taught America that yes, we can achieve anything, and Elon Musk launched Falcon 1, the first ever privately developed spaceship to make orbit. Michael Phelps became an icon, winning a record eight gold medals at the Beijing Olympic Games, and Britney Spears proved the power of the expression New Year, New Me by releasing a hit album and launching a triumphant world tour. And yes, the economy took a hit, but love still prevailed, with power couples Beyonce and Jay-Z tying the knot and Brangelina having twins. Who else misses Brangelina, by the way? Everyone? Everyone. But what else made this particular year so entertaining? Let's find out. This is your Year in Review 2008 edition. And coming in hotter than a cramped Fleetwood RV in New Mexico is Breaking Bad, a crime drama television series created by Vince Gilligan. It's the story of Walter White, a brilliant but underappreciated high school chemistry teacher who, after being diagnosed with stage three lung cancer, utilizes his laboratory expertise to produce and sell crystal meth and ultimately provide for his family. The cast includes Brian Cranston, Anna Gunn, Aaron Paul, Dean Norris, Betsy Brandt, RJ Mitty, Giancarlo Esposito, and Bob Odenkirk. Though each of these actors was incredible on the show, Cranston's portrayal of Walter White has been hailed as one of the greatest acting achievements in television history and earned him the Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series four times. Honestly, I never expected you to amount to much, but methamphetamine? I didn't picture that. There's a lot of money in it, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. No? Not a clue. The show ran for five seasons, 60 episodes, and was almost unanimously praised by critics, with numerous respected publications listing it as the greatest TV show of all time. Breaking Bad was nominated for a total of 58 Emmys, winning 16, and it even spawned the spin-off series Better Call Saul and the feature El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Critics say, though at times it feels forced and its imagery can be gruesome, Breaking Bad is darkly gripping and features a strong sympathetic lead in Bryan Cranston. Multifaceted director Jon Favreau brings Iron Man, a superhero delight based on the Marvel Comics character of the same name. We follow billionaire genius Tony Stark, who after conducting weapons tests overseas, is kidnapped and held in captivity by a terrorist group. Stark manages to escape by building an armored suit, and when he returns to America, he refines that suit and vows to use his powers to combat crime and terrorism. Iron Man was the first film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and was produced by Avi Arad and Kevin Feige. The cast includes Robert Downey Jr., Terrence Howard, Gwyneth Paltrow, Sean Tube, and Jeff Bridges. Though Downey seemed like an obvious choice for Iron Man and more or less made the film, Favreau faced opposition from Marvel when casting him. Favreau saw a parallel in Downey's real life and the character Tony Stark and felt that Downey could bring an unparalleled emotional authenticity to the role. Yeah, I can fly. And it's a good thing Favreau fought to cast Downey because the film was a critical and commercial victory, and it was nominated for two Oscars. Additionally, it spawned two successful sequels, Iron Man 2 in 2010 and Iron Man 3 in 2013. Critics say, powered by Robert Downey Jr.'s vibrant charm, Iron Man turbocharges the superhero genre with a deft intelligence and an infectious sense of fun. There may be hundreds of skulls at Akator, 
Whoever finds them will control the greatest natural force the world has ever known. Power over the mind of men. Be careful. You might get exactly what you wish for. The Spielberg, Ford, and Lucas Dream Team returned with Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, the fourth installment in the Indiana Jones series. The film is set in 1957, where Indiana and his former lover Marion Ravenwood set out to find the legendary Crystal Skull of Akator in Peru. There's just one major issue. Soviet KGB agents led by Irina Spalko are also on the same mission and will stop at nothing to retrieve the skull before Jones and his company. It had been 19 years since the release of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, partially because Lucas was unable to come up with a sufficient plot to drive the next installment. Finally, after years of script development and several writer's attempts, Lucas and Spielberg hired David Cope to pen the screenplay that became the final version of the film. Kate Blanchett and Karen Allen starred alongside Ford, and of course, John Williams composed the score. I mean, what would a Spielberg Lucas film be without some Williams music? The film was a box office smash and received mostly positive reviews, but more than anything, audiences were thrilled to see Ford return to one of his most iconic roles. I said one of his most iconic, not his most, relax Star Wars fans. Critics say, Though the plot elements are certainly familiar, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull still delivers the thrills and Harrison Ford's return in the title role is more than welcome. Oh, Pixar, must you always tug at our heartstrings? Seriously, I'm, I'm still not over the movie Up. But back to 2008. WALL-E was Pixar's ninth feature film, and it follows the last robot left on Earth, who spends his day tidying up the planet one piece of garbage at a time. WALL-E stands for Waste Allocation Load Lifter Earth Class, and despite his specific function, the adorable little robot is filled with personality, charm, and love. Yes, Wally meets a sleek and sophisticated robot named Eve, who was sent to Earth on a mission to find signs of sustainable life. Wally's love for Eve sends him on an eye-opening journey across the galaxy. The film features the voice talents of Ben Burt, Elissa Knight, Jeff Garland, Sigourney Weaver, and many others, and was directed by Andrew Stanton, who also co-wrote the script with Jim Reardon. Thematically, WALL-E is a social criticism, touching on topics of consumerism, human environmental impact, global catastrophic risk, and obesity. And yeah, it's uh, still a kid's movie. Critics praise the animation, voice acting and score, and the film topped Time's list of the best movies of the decade. Additionally, WALL-E won the Oscar for Best Animated Feature and grossed over $521 million at the box office. Critics say, WALL-E's stellar visuals testify once again to Pixar's ingenuity, while its charming star will captivate young viewers and its timely story offers thought-provoking subtext. Make this pencil disappear. Ta -da! It's. It's gone. Next up is The Dark Knight, the second installment in Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. Christian Bale was back, as were Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, and Morgan Freeman, and joining the cast was Aaron Eckert, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and of course Heath Ledger in his last completed role before tragically passing away. Bale Man had proven to be an effective crime fighter, keeping the menaces of Gotham in check, but when a violent villain calling himself the Joker throws the city into chaos, the Cape Crusader must combat the ensuing violence while confronting his own values and fears. Ah! 
The Dark Knight is widely considered to be one of the most influential films of all time, and fans constantly rank this installment as the greatest Batman movie to date. Aside from the gripping screenplay, visual styles, score, stunts, and themes, the film was praised for its acting. Most notable, of course, was Heath Ledger as Joker, a performance that earned the late actor a posthumous Oscar, Screen Actors Guild Award, Golden Globe, and a BAFTA for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. Additionally, The Dark Knight had a profound influence on several notable filmmakers and their works, including Ryan Coogler with Black Panther and Sam Mendes with Skyfall. Critics say, Dark, complex, and unforgettable, The Dark Knight succeeds not just as an entertaining comic book film, but as a richly thrilling crime saga. And coming up next, we're talking about the other film that was released on the same day as The Dark Knight. Can you guess which one of these films that was? I feel like there's a part of me missing. And when I meet my dad, <laughs> everything will fall into place. Released in the U.S. on the same summer day as The Dark Knight, Mamma Mia! is a musical comedy directed by Phillida Lloyd and written by Katherine Johnson. The film is based on Johnson's 1999 musical of the same name, which took inspiration from the songs of the sensational Swedish pop group ABBA. If me mentioning ABBA doesn't immediately get you dancing or jiving or having the time of your life, then this may not be the movie for you. Mamma Mia! stars Meryl Streep, Pierce Brosnan, Colin Firth, Stellan Skarsgård, and Amanda Seyfried, and follows a young bride-to-be as she sneakily invites three of her mother's past lovers to her wedding in hopes of meeting her real father and having him escort her down the aisle. I thought what an amazing surprise for her that you are all going to be at my wedding. Hang on, Sophie. <laughs> I can't be here. The last time I saw your mother, she said she never wanted to see me again. But that was years ago! Though the film became the fifth highest grossing of the year, it received a pretty lukewarm critical reception. The Guardian gave it one star and said something about needing to vomit, which seems a little harsh. Despite that, most of the cast returned for a sequel titled Mamma Mia! Here We Go Again, which was released in July of 2018. Critics say, This jukebox musical is full of fluffy fun, but rough singing voices and a campy tone might not make you feel like you can dance the whole 90 minutes. We think it would be very prudent. Can we turn our beds into bunk beds? Yes. Why are you guys so sweaty? All right, we've already figured out how to do this. The beds match up perfectly. And here's the thing, it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. Please say yes. You don't need permission from us to build bunk beds. You're adults. Legendary producer Judd Apatow teamed up with director Adam McKay to bring us Step Brothers, a comedy that stars Will Ferrell, John C. Riley, Richard Jenkins, Mary Steenburgen, Adam Scott, and Katherine Hahn. McKay also co-wrote the script with Will Ferrell, a creative partnership that proved to be successful after 2004's Anchorman swept the nation. Farrell is Brennan Huff and Riley is Dale Doback, two lazy unemployed leeches who still live with and are entirely dependent on their parents. Was that a fart? I don't know. I can taste it. On my tongue. Okay, I, I'll be honest with you, I did fart. Is that onion? Onion and, onion and ketchup. It stinks. When Brennan's mother and Dale's father marry and move in together, the immature adult boys are forced to live side by side. Their rivalry pulls the new family apart and the two must learn to work together for the sake of reuniting their parents. Though the film received a mixed critical reception, it was a commercial success. And let's be honest, it put the Catalina wine mixer on the map. Critics say, Step Brothers indulges in a cheerfully relentless immaturity that will quickly turn off viewers unamused by Will Ferrell and Riley and delight those who find their antics hilarious. I bet I get to the bottom of it. I take this badge off and get to the bottom of it. I don't work for the law. Okay, the law it. works for me. I promise you, I've been smelling okay, something in this department for a long a time a and I'm gonna get to the bottom okay. of this 
Apatow Productions struck again with Pineapple Express, a comedy directed by David Gordon Green and written by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Rogen plays Dale Denton, a stoner who witnessed a murder and, in a panic, drops his joint filled with a rare strain of marijuana known as Pineapple Express. Denton learns that the fancy weed can be traced back to him, so he and his dealer flee, but are tracked by the dangerous drug lord and the crooked cop behind the killing. Apatow was inspired by Brad Pitt's character Floyd in True Romance and thought it would be funny to make a movie in which you follow that character out of his apartment and watch him get chased by bad guys. Additionally, David Gordon Green cited Midnight Run, Running Scared, The Blues Brothers, The Gravy Train, and Stir Crazy as sources of inspiration and influence for his direction. Suck my balls! Two times! <sighs> Pineapple Express gained a cult following and was financially fruitful. Though discussions for a sequel were in the works, budgeting conflicts stopped the potential follow-up in its tracks. Critics say, both funny and scattershot, this loose-knit action buddy stoner comedy bridges genres and keeps a steady tempo of lowball laughs. God, we lost, we super lost, man. Tell them, McCluskey, tell them what time it is. I don't believe you people. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? Huh? I Closing out an epic silver screen summer is Tropic Thunder, an action comedy directed by Ben Stiller, who also co-wrote the screenplay with Justin Thoreau and Ethan Cohen. The ensemble cast includes Stiller, Jack Black, Robert Downey Jr., Steve Coogan, Jay Bruchel, Danny McBride, Brandon T. Jackson, Bill Hader, Nick Nolte, Tom Cruise, and Matthew McConaughey. Stiller plays Tug Speedman, a pampered action hero who hopes to redeem his string of box office flops by traversing to Southeast Asia and starring in the most expensive war movie ever produced. But after filming begins, Speedman and his co-stars are forced to become real soldiers when they stumble into the jungle territory of a militant drug lord. Um, that's the signal! Go, 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 go! Let's go freaking get here! Stiller developed the idea for Tropic Thunder back in 1987 during the production of Empire of the Sun, but this film wouldn't be greenlit until 2006 after he enlisted the writing help of Thoreau and Cohen. The script satirizes Apocalypse Now, Missing in Action, Rambo, Platoon, Full Metal Jacket, Hamburger Hill, and The Deer Hunter, but much of the dialogue was improvised and developed by the actors on the set. Tropic Thunder was a critical and commercial success, and despite an abundance of surrounding controversy, it received an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Critics say, with biting satire, plenty of subversive humor, and an unforgettable turn by Robert Downey Jr., Tropic Thunder is a triumphant late summer comedy. Where the hell was Rodrigo? No sign of your watchman. What's the exposure? Officially? Me and the fire department. The fire captain can be convinced to rethink his report. Unofficially? Unofficially, this blast was seen in two counties. This location is dead. Sons of Anarchy was a crime drama television series created by Kurt Sutter that ran on FX for seven seasons. Sutter had previously worked as producer, writer, and director on The Shield, and similarly stretched his creative abilities by being the showrunner, frequent writer, and regular director on Sons of Anarchy. The mighty cast included Charlie Hunnam, Katie Segal, Mark Boone Jr., Kim Coates, Tommy Flanagan, Johnny Lewis, Maggie Siff, Ron Perlman, and many, many others. Hunnam played Jackson Jax Teller, vice president of a close-knit outlaw motorcycle club operating in Charming, a fictional town in California. Teller discovers a manifesto left behind by his late father and soon questions his position in the club and where his true loyalties lie. Sons of Anarchy explored topics of government corruption, racism, and human transformation, and the show consulted with real-life members of the Oakland chapter of Hell's Angels. The series received positive reviews and developed a loyal and expansive fan base. It also spawned a successful spin-off series called Mayans MC, which premiered on FX in September of 2018. 
Critics say, rough and harsh, Sons of Anarchy features one of television's best ensemble casts. Coming up in just a second, we're closing out the year with an almost straight to DVD film that shook up the Oscars, winning eight out of 10 awards it was nominated for. Can you guess which one of these films we're talking about? According to our records, you've never been a maker, is that right? Yes. But you know the procedure? Yes. <laughs> and proceed. 2008 was a great year for vampires in film, with the Twilight movie saga igniting and the Swedish horror film Let the Right One In earning critical praise. And on the smaller screen, the fantasy series True Blood was taking over. True Blood was created by Alan Ball and based on a series of novels titled The Southern Vampire Mysteries, written by Charlene Harris. The show revolves around Sookie Stackhouse, a telepathic waitress living in the fictional town of Bon Tom, Louisiana. In this world, vampires live amongst humans thanks to a synthetic blood product called True Blood that sustains their nutritional needs, but doesn't quite satisfy those cravings for the real thing. Sookie falls in love with a 174-year-old vampire named Bill Compton and must confront the troubles of being in a controversial relationship. True Blood premiered on HBO and ran for seven seasons. The show has been nominated for numerous industry awards, and Anna Paquin's performance as Sookie has been singled out for its brilliance. Critics say, it's unabashedly soapy and it occasionally wavers in its social commentary, but True Blood is a gory, sexy genre romp with a strong supporting cast. We know of Dooku's plot to turn the huts against us. It will not succeed. It will when the truth dies with you. <laughs> Star Wars The Clone Wars was a computer animated television series that ran for seven seasons. It was created by George Lucas and is set during the three years between the prequel films, Episode 2 Attack of the Clones, and Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. Lucas hired the multi-talented creative Dave Filoni as a supervising director after seeing his work on episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender. Pre-production began in 2005 with Lucasfilm Animation utilizing Autodesk software and the Maya 3D modeling program to create much of the detailed worlds and characters. Unless you call off your troops right now, I will have no choice but to destroy you. Truthfully, I was hoping your shield would be knocked out by now. Did you get the charges set? Yes. Then what are you waiting for? The Clone Wars debuted on the Cartoon Network, where it stayed for five seasons before moving to Netflix for season six and finally landing on Disney Plus for its seventh and final season. The series was nominated for several industry awards, and season one received a mostly positive critical reception. But let's talk about that 100% tomato meter score that seasons three, five, six, and seven are all rocking. Critics say, with an agreeably entertaining first season, Star Wars The Clone Wars opens a fun, kid-friendly chapter of the franchise's sprawling mythology. The song Darshan Dogan Sham was written by which famous Indian poet? A. Surdas B. Tulsidas C. Mirabai D. Kabir Closing out a year of glorious entertainment is Slumdog Millionaire, a dramedy that was loosely adapted from the novel Q&A written by Indian author Vikos Swaroop. The film was directed by Danny Boyle, written by Simon Beaufoy, and starred Dev Patel, Frida Pinto, and Irfan Khan. It's the story of 18-year-old Jamal Malik, who after his mother dies, learns to survive on the streets of Mumbai as part of a stable of young thieves. He and his brother Salim scrape by with small jobs and petty crimes until Jamal finds himself on the Indian version of the show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Get a lot of $100 bills in your line of work? A minimum tip for my services. Oh, now I know why my cell phone bills are so high. 
They tip the child with hundred dollar bills. It's C, Benjamin Franklin. The film was a critical and commercial triumph, earning over 378 million at the box office and winning eight out of 10 Academy Award nominations, the most of any film that year. Those wins include Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Critics say, Visually dazzling and emotionally resonant, Slumdog Millionaire is a film that's both entertaining and powerful. And there you have it, our highlights from a year filled with robots, stoners, and vampires, oh my. We sang and we danced, rode Harleys, and fought crime. Is that intentional to rhyme? I thought my jokes were bad. As always, we couldn't include every title from such a noteworthy year, but don't go shining the bat signal. It's not our fault 2008 was so dangerously epic. 